All right, Jordan, now that we have turned the page, we've given our final thoughts on App State, uh, the offensive explosion, all the young pieces that got work, we have to now kind of ask ourselves a question. Which Clemson team are we going to get? Which Clemson, Which version of Clemson is true? We're going to do a rear-facing segment about the two games that we just watched as Clemson fans in the 2024 season, right? And to me, it's a tale of two games. You got the Georgia game where things didn't go right, you didn't execute early, and the game just got away from you in the second half. Georgia's offense prevailed. They beat your defense down. The offense for Clemson never really got anything going. You turn to the App State game, right? The exact opposite happened. The offense exploded, hitting big play after big play after big play. And before 10 minutes were gone in the game, it was over, right? So they really couldn't be two any different games than the two games we've seen the Clemson Tigers play so far this season. So the question is, how do we make sense of those two games and which version of Clemson is the real Clemson? How do we, how do we interpret what we've seen so far this season from our Clemson Tigers? Yeah. I mean, I, I think that is the ultimate question. Um, I, I definitely think the answer lies somewhere in the middle. Um, yeah. You know, I, I don't think they're as good as they, they showed on, on, on Saturday. Of course, they're not going to look like that every week. I don't think they're as, and I also don't think they're as bad as they looked against Georgia as, as good. Georgia makes a lot of teams look bad. So, you know, that's, that's just kind of the reality of playing the number one team in the country. Um, but you definitely felt like you left a lot on the table there. Um, and, and you just, once you couldn't get things going early, it just, it kind of spiraled from there. And you just feel like if, if you had done some things differently and, and some of the, the basic, you know, football one-on-one stuff was executed, maybe, you know, things look you know, a little bit different and you don't come away feeling as, um, you know, just disappointed with the, the outcome, even if you still lose. Um, and, and so I, I think definitely the answer is somewhere in the middle. I, I, I tend, I'm, I'm going to lean towards what we saw uh, on Saturday because obviously I, I think you, from a personnel standpoint and just uh, um, an offensive uh, philosophy and um, mentality, it was a lot different. Um, I, I think you you gained a lot of confidence, you know, coming out of this game. I, I think this is these are the types of games that you use to build momentum. And with a young team with a lot of really talented weapons um, and, and a talented offense and talented quarterback, talented offensive line, like uh, and you have to build that. You have to build that confidence. And, um, you know, they were it, it, Georgia was just kind of what that matchup was. You like the pieces, but you didn't really know how well they were going to me- mesh, you know, game one. And they just they clearly didn't mesh game one. And you mm-hmm. didn't obviously you didn't necessarily play your best players in that game either, which right. I think is also a massive part of that. <laughs> um, so um, I, I, I do think that certainly played a role. So, I, yeah, I, I think the reality is, is, you know, we're it's, it's kind of incomplete for this team right now. Um, but I definitely, you know, lean towards what we saw on Saturday is what we'll see from this team, you know, more often than not going forward. I, does that mean they're going to be like a top five offense? I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go that far yet. I, I think Kate has made um, a lot of strides, but it's going to take a lot of like, you know, he, you're going to have to see that consistently week to week before I, I you know, hop onto that train. Uh, but I also think, I don't expect many like 250 yard outings from this, this offense this, this year and, or in a hundred yard passing games from K that, that, that you saw at times last year, like against right. Wake for Wake Forest and South Carolina and, and Notre Dame. Like, it, yeah. like I, I, I think you've found enough consistency offensively um, and uh, you, you found enough uh, explosiveness from a playmaking standpoint where I, I don't think that's going to be something that that's going to happen very much this year, if at all. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, and it it truly is a tale of two games. And, you know, you kind of leave yourself 
I did at least this week, you know, leading up to our show, you know, how, how do you decipher these two games? UGA that good? App State, are they that bad? Right? Uh, you know, how much have the, has the offense truly improved? Right? Which version of the offense is real? Uh, you know, can Clemson continue to be this explosive? Right? Um, you know, you just you ask yourself all these questions. And I think, you know, as most of it's like an eye roll thing to say, it truly is somewhere in the middle, right? The truth with this team, the truth with this offense lies somewhere in the middle of those two games, right? I don't think Clemson's nearly as bad as they looked offensively and defensively in that second half as as they looked against Georgia. Like, I don't believe that's Clemson, right? You're also not going to go eight for eight on possessions and touchdowns uh, probably ever again this season, right? Or maybe again, right? That's a super special outing, right? So you have to you have to take both of these games and really try to figure out what Clemson is. And I think you mentioned one thing that's that's a key for me, right? The personnel was completely different in how it was handled early in this game against App State versus the game against Georgia, right? Our young, talented receivers got a lot of burn early in this game, right? The play calling was different, right? The explosive plays were called early and often in this game. Against Georgia, we only took six shots the entire game. Three in the first half, three in the second half. None of them hit outside of that one to Antonio Williams over on the sideline, right? That was the only explosive play that hit, right? So, um, you know, it just it felt different. The scheming felt different. The play calling felt different. The confidence of the team felt different. And it goes back to what I was saying before about momentum and confidence. I truly do think hitting that big explosive play early completely changed the game for Clemson. I don't think the offensive outing w- would have been nearly what it was without hitting that explosive play to Bryant Wesco on the third play of the game for a 75-yard touchdown pass. Without that play, that offensive explosion, it's not that we did, we wouldn't have had an offensive explosion, I don't think, but it wouldn't have nearly looked like it did, in my opinion. I'm, I'm right. kind of with you. Because um, especially when you when you consider, I, I do think like that shook like that that big play kind of shook App State. Like you could tell, yeah. like when you, especially going back on the rewatch, they were just a they were a step slow on basically everything. Now yeah. that App State defense, that that defensive secondary in particular, they had a lot of transfers and guys that were new to the program. Um, so you know, you know, take that that is something to be considered here, and and why like as much as I think like this offense has turned a corner. It's like, yeah, we're, I don't, I don't expect this to, I don't think we're all of a sudden an elite offense now. Um, they're, they're clearly um, still probably had, they pr- probably still have more growth to go uh, and they'll probably have some more um, lumps to that. They'll have to take throughout the year. Uh, hopefully that just doesn't result in losses. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'm with you. Uh, and I, I think that first play uh, that, that first big play kind of, it changed how they called the game defensively app state and kind of how their players responded because they were just kind of a step slow on, on a lot of um, different uh, on a lot of plays, which is what you want. They, they, yeah. they respected this is the first time in a long time that a team respected your deep, <laughs> your deep uh, uh, passing game. Mm-hmm. Um, and when a team respects your deep passing game, it opens up everything underneath and, in and, and makes it so much easier to run your regular offense. Um, so like, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of, uh, it, it, it they both kind of feed into each other, so I, I thought that was um, that was good, you know. So I I don't think you'll you'll I don't think you'll play another secondary that has as rough of a day as App State did for you know for sure. But I, I do think that you've put that on tape now, and mm-hmm. you have explosiveness, you have explosive playmate, you've shown that you have explosive playmakers in your offense. That's going to change how defensive coordinators and um, you know, the defenses you face kind of play you. So yeah. um, it has to change it. Yeah. You, you have to somewhat respect it now uh, because to your point, it is on tape, right? So, um, yeah, I think, you know, much like you, it's, it's somewhere in the middle for this Clemson team. What does that mean? Um, I think it's closer to the version that you saw against App State. Um, 
And the reason that I say that is I think this, this App State game will go a long way in confidence for this Clemson offense. They needed this. That Clemson offense needed this type of game in the worst way possible because they just haven't seen it. And you go back to Dabo talking, and I know we've been duped before, and we thought, you know, and, and maybe it still proves true that we were duped again coming into this season, right? Um, but according to Dabo, right, this offense hit the most explosive plays against our defense in fall camp since 2019. So what does that say? Bad defense, good offense, you know, somewhere in the middle. Uh, clearly this is an explosive offense or an offense that has the ability to be explosive under the right circumstances. You could say that for certain as of right now. Now we'll see where we're at going forward, right? Roll into NC State after this bye week, um, and it keeps rolling after that, right? NC State, Florida State, so on and so forth. The schedule keeps rolling, right? But, you know, I, I think the offense – finally had a, a coming out game and it's going to pay dividends for every player's confidence on that offense. And it's going to pay dividends for our defense, having confidence in that offense and maybe going out there and playing with a little more, more effort, playing a little bit more free, right? Playing a little bit more nasty out there on defense, knowing that that offense is on the other side and let's go get this ball so they can go score again. Right. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of where I land on the tail of two games and kind of trying to decipher and kind of put these two games together into one and be like, where are we at? I'm with you. And uh, that's you know, that's just going to be the kind of how we play it, because, again, we've had we you can't draw overarching conclusions after two games and especially with Clemson and the, the two you know polar opposite results that you could have gotten. <laughs> through two games you, you just you don't know kind of where they exactly where they fall and we'll get we'll 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 know more after this bye week um and against a power five a, a, a power four opponent that's not the number one team in the country it will we'll, we'll probably get the more of the the median expectation for this team um yeah. even though i don't know maybe with how nc state has looked through two weeks maybe they might not be yeah. that that much better than App State. <laughs> it's, it's look rough. If they that. are at all. Yeah, they've, they've been it, rough. It, it could – the season – I mean, it could have started worse for them. They, they could have lost that first game. Uh, but it's, it's seemingly the season uh, has started in the worst way possible uh, for, for NC State, which I know makes you super sad. Yeah, I'm devastated. I'm devastated. Uh, although I <laughs> – Although it, it was kind of like for me, like watching that Tennessee game, I was like, "Well, I don't, I don't really care for for the Vols either." Um, well, at least they're yeah. fans. Um, so, but you know, I, ultimately, I was it, it was fun to see them because they in NC State. And uh, I'm not going to make this an NC. We'll, we'll talk all about NC State next week. Yes, uh, we when will. That game rolls around, but yeah. um, you know. Big game for sure, and you know you hopefully you know you're coming into this with a with a little bit of a chip on your shoulder because they've beaten you two out of the last three years. I mean, say what you want, um, that and that's not that's not normal around here. Um, you Clemson has historically dominated in NC State, and so you know that's we got to anytime gotta, you lose to them, it's 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 not fun. Yeah, we got to rectify that in a, a quick, fast, and in a hurry this year. 